Hi everyone, thanks for joining me in another episode of Sealed for Good. Today we're going to talk about vapour block primers and moisture barriers and how they are used and when they should be used in your applications out in the field. Now there's a lot of talk about using a, a vapour barrier on a mineral surface and that is something that's either concrete or a screed, a sand cement screed, render masonry and where the rising damp often comes through or retained moisture comes through and can create a problem. So there's two things that retained dampness can create with membranes or screeds with tile systems. One is if you are using a membrane over a damp substrate and you've got rising damp obviously it can blister the membrane particularly if it's outside. The other one which we see often with tiling systems is the efflorescence phenomena. And so everyone's got deadlines and jobs have to be done and sometimes you've gone to do a job and there's retained moisture in the concrete or the screed. It could be dry, surface dry, but retained moisture is in there because the fact is you've got morning dew, uh, dew overnight, the morning dew is on there, or it has rained and then the rain evaporates, but it's been absorbed into that substrate because it's porous. And so everyone's trying to find a quick way to finish the job. The best way to be doing this is with something like the Gripset E60, which is our water-based epoxy primer. It's a fantastic product. You can use it, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You mix it up and you apply that and it's perfect on a mineral surface because it will have tenacious adhesion as an epoxy onto that substrate. And once it's, once it's dried and it has a chemical process because it's two component, once that's dried, you can get your membrane over there. And if there's any retained moisture in that screed or the concrete, it won't blister or impact the adhesion of the membrane on the, on the substrate. With, it, with blistering phenomena. The other part of it though to realise is that we're seeing more and more tilers now looking at things like a two-part epoxy on top of the screed because they've obviously laid a screed, they go over and under, there's a screed laid on a membrane and then that screed might have retained moisture and obviously it's waiting for it to evaporate and it doesn't dry as quick because there's a, there's a non-porous surface underneath that. Putting an epoxy primer on top allows you to get over that a little bit quicker. Now you do need to make sure that you, you should always have a moisture gauge with you and if you don't have one, invest in one. If you're a serious waterproofer, it's worthwhile investing in a moisture meter and understanding what the moisture levels are in screeds on concrete. And a good example of the trades that do this are the flooring guys in timber. They always measure the, the moisture levels in, in concrete before they lay things like timber or parquetry down. Waterproofers should be doing this as well. It's a really good quality measure that will allow you to understand exactly what the level of moisture is in that substrate you're going on. But the water-based epoxy on a screed then allows you to ensure that the screed is not taking ages to dry, even if you've got another membrane on there or you've got to get your tile adhesive onto it. And so the other advantage of that is, is that if you're putting in something like the epoxy on the, on the screed, you're not going to get the efflorescence issue with salts coming out of the screed because it, it blocks it. And that is a big problem in the industry at the moment where you might have an external area which is not leaking but you've got all that efflorescence and salt staining through the grout joints coming up and that's really coming up through the cement bed screed through into the coming in contact with the tile adhesive, the grout and then staining. And so it's a big, it's a big discussion point. I'm going to have a, a session on efflorescence and a new product of ours coming out shortly on how we're going to control that and help you with it. But at this point in time, it's always a good investment to go with the E60. The other alternative we have, many of you have been using our Gripset P10, which is our polyurethane vapour barrier. Now this is not water-based and it's not solvent-based, it's 100% solids. And so when that goes onto a substrate like a screed or concrete, the difference between that and the E60, which we get lots of questions, E60 as an epoxy has high adhesion to the substrate, P10 penetrates because it's got very low, par uh, low particle size and it will seep into even quite dense concrete surfaces. So when you find a pull-off test, you'll see that it actually will pull the screed of the concrete out with it because it's penetrated quite deep. And the difference with this is that it has a higher coverage per square meter, per litre. It's moisture curing, so it will cure with the level of moisture in the screed or the ambient conditions. And so if there's some damp air around, it actually dries better than in dry heat. But the big advantage of P10 is that being 100% solids, it's got outstanding resistance to solvents. And so this product's used a lot, even though we don't make a solvent-based membrane or coating, but we've used it a lot with flooring guys, solvent-based materials will bond to the P10 very well because it won't break it down. 
And so it's another option for you in our range. I have to say the E60 has to be the common practice where guys are using two-pack water-based epoxies on their substrates. And the other advantage of the two-pack water-based is that we've got a potable water certificate with the E60, so things like fish ponds, water features, etc. It's safe to use their water tanks and there's no emission of any harmful chemicals at all. And it also blocks that moisture that's coming through from the sides or coming up through a fish pond or, or water feature, which often undoes a lot of membrane applications in those applications, that, in those situations. And just to, I don't, I don't often do a cell job here, but I'm going to let you know that the E60 is probably one of the most competitive epoxy primers out in the marketplace. We formulate it, we make it here. It's a great product for you to use if you haven't tried it before and you want to rival it up against some of the better known uh, incumbent products that have been used over the years, you'll see that our price is far more competitive and the performance is equal or I'll tell you it's superior. But that's just me, I'll let you be the test and tell me what you think. If you've got any more questions on the E60 or moisture uh, barriers or vapour barriers and when to use them, fire them away to our technical services department, we're here to help. Or ask your sales guys, they're there to help you, or many of our resellers out there know all about it as well and they can give you a hand. Until next time, I'll see you in another episode of Silver Good.